Hi everyone, Eran Stern here with a behind the scenes tutorial which will unfold the creation of the promo for my latest After Effects training DVD, A New Solid. I'll give you more details about the DVD later on, but suffice to say that to this date it is the longest running DVD from creativecow.net. Nearly 8 hours in all. So, when I started to think about the spirit of the promo, I figured that instead of huge impact elements flying all over the screen, I should take a different approach this time. Hey, don't get me wrong, I like fast-paced graphics element as the next guy or maybe even more than him. And to prove this point, I also created another commercial which is much more hectic. But just for teasing, maybe a calm atmosphere would work better. This is what I thought. A new song. Collection of After Effects tutorials. More than seven hours. Two hour bonus of lessons never seen before. Hosted by Eran Stern. Available out now. <laughs> This spot, as you guessed by now, is mostly based around the relatively new Boys Continuum Complete Sticks, now available for Final Cut Pro, Final Cut Express, Motion, Premiere Pro, and of course, my weapon of choice, After Effects. In this special episode, I'd like to share with you some concept ideas and techniques I used to create the short spot you've just seen. So, without further ado, let's dive right in. Before we'll begin, I'd like to share with you a few tests that I did before submitting to this solution. At first, I thought it will be a good idea if I can shoot some extreme slow motion of a falling DVD box that lands on pieces of polystyrene and push them away in all directions. So I've prepared a set for this, designed the DVD cover, which was redesigned eventually later, and threw the DVD couple of times, hoping to get an interesting shot. Once I got something interesting, I added my titles and narration and was absolutely sure that it will be good enough to catch the audience attention and deliver my message. So this is my first draft as you see here. Not too bad, but quite far away from what I had in mind. No matter what I tried, I never managed to capture the angle I was aiming for. And even worse, when I showed this to a few of my colleagues, they all said that something is missing and even added that it doesn't look real as well. Do you get it? Not real? This is reality, guys. How can it look unreal? Well, I guess we are all so used to exaggerated 3D motion these days that when it comes to the real thing, it doesn't look real enough anymore. Go figure. So, I started to do some 3D tests with a simulation reactor system in 3ds Max and came up with even lousier result. Well, you can always claim that I'm not so good with 3D apps and it will not be so far away from the truth. Anyway, this time it suddenly hit me that I'm missing the point here. And if the name of the title is A New Solid, I might assimilate it instead of breaking things apart giving the sense that it is building itself from pieces and not the other way around. This is where I started to explore my After Effects options. At a perfect timing, the guys from Boris Effects announced a new plugin now part of a huge set of Boris Continuum Complete version 6. I was so impressed from it that I've decided to create everything using these tools. After this long introduction, I want to show you how I use these filters to create my promo. My first and most important task was to create a believable DVD box inside After Effects. For that, I started inside Photoshop. Here inside Photoshop, I took the cover art designed by no other than Mr. Ron Lindeboom himself. Did you know that on top of all his skills is also a superstar graphic designer? Thank you, Ron. So I took the cover art and split it to its basic parts, divided each segment into its own layer. I also took a picture of the plastic side for the upper, lower and side parts. 
By the way, the reason the side cover is mirrored here is due to the nature of the BCC plugin, which I'll show you in a minute. So this will be more clear momentarily. Anyway, with the basic cutout out of the way, I went back into After Effects. Here I created a 30 seconds comp and dragged my Photoshop layers as a separate files to this timeline. Now we are ready to add the first effect. In order to use the BCC 3D object filters, you need to create a new solid. It is recommended that it will be the same size of your comp, but in my case, I'll set it to my DVD layer size. I found out that this is easier than scaling it later and try to match it using my own eyes. So I'll create a new solid, set the width to 568 pixels and the height to 833 pixels. These dimensions will vary according to your individual input. The color of the solid doesn't matter, so I'll say OK. Don't worry if you see that the layer is cropping out of the screen. We'll fix it later in post. Oh, what I'm saying, we are in post right now. So OK, we'll fix it later when we'll animate it, trust me. Moving on, to this solid, let's add the BCC Extruded Spline Filter, which you can find under the BCC 3D Objects category. At this point of time, it's best to work with the transparency grid enabled, so just make sure to toggle the transparency switch in the comp view. This plugin, as you see, got so many controls and it's very sophisticated with enormous toolset at your disposal. When you first apply it, it comes out with a default rectangle primitive that fits perfectly to our instance, but do notice that you can change it to a different path like line, arrow, polygon, star, or even your own AE path. For now, I'll stick with the rectangle and then open up the primitive section and then set its scale to 100 on both X and Y, which will make sure that the shape will cover the whole layer. While we are here, I'll also set the corner size to a lower number, such as 5. This will give it a similar shape to a real DVD box. Also, let's open the extrusion and change the extrusion depth to 10, giving it more depth on the side. Moving down under Material Count, I'll change it to 4, Front, Bevel, Side and Back. This will allow me to define different textures to each side of my box. For that, you need the plane layers to be present in this timeline. So let's quickly set each plane to its corresponding layer. For the front material, assign the front texture layer to the front cover. For the side material, assign the front texture layer to the plastic cover. And for the back material, assign the front texture layer to the back cover. Good. Now if you open the transformation and start to play, let's say, with the rotate Y, you should see the basic setup as it warps on top of this primitive shape. For some reason, it doesn't always register as expected. I'm not sure why it behaves like this, but I suspect that it is due to the layer size which is not the same size of the comp. Since the adjustments here are so easy, I wouldn't worry about it too much now. You can scale it back and move it to place by modifying the scale and shift under each plane. In this example, I'll set the scale of the back texture to 200 on both dimensions and also shift it to 100 pixels on both X and Y. You might need to do the same adjustments on the side material as well. Let's open it and set here the scale X to 10, scale Y to 300 and shift Y to 20. Now all the planes are matching nicely on each side. At this stage, you'll need to make a design choice. Since this extruded spline effect will not allow you to define six different textures for each side, 
you should come up with a clever way you want to animate it. It's a little difficult to see what I mean because the default lightning is not that strong. So let's scroll down, open the built-in light and change the source Z position to 1, which will place the light closer to the camera. And if we come back to the transformation now and play with the rotate values, you can see that the plastic case texture is on both three sides of the DVD box. If you want to show the plastic case, like in this case, you can leave it like this. But if you need to show another side, you can choose an alternative layer and this will register on the other side as well. If, for example, I will select the side layer here, you can now understand why I choose to mirror it in Photoshop. When doing so in Photoshop, it will show up correct here. If there is a need, you can always, of course, scale it here and reposition it like I showed you before until you get the perfect spot. It is totally up to you. Just be aware of this three plane limitation and plan your animation accordingly. To be honest, at first I thought this is a real limitation, but then I figured that I never needed to show both sides of my DVD anyway. So in my case, it worked perfectly. In this example, I'll set it back to the plastic case layer. Once again, your mileage may vary and you might need to do your own tweaking. Anyhow, believe me, it's worth to do it like this, because after you will set the basic planes, you have a total control of the animation and this plugin will offer you many additional options, which until this point of time, we can only dream of doing inside After Effects. So, let's see what I mean. Let's animate the box to do something interesting. As most of the effects in this group, this plugin is aware to the After Effects built-in 3D environment, including camera and lights. But I found out that it is even easier to use the built-in transformation and lights to get the same, if not better result. In this case, I'll go to the first frame of my timeline and under the transformations, I'll reset it back to the default values. Next, I'll set the master scale to 60%, which will now show the whole DVD in its full glory, and then record only two keyframes for the X rotate property. Before doing so, to get an interesting angle, I'll first rotate it on its Y axis to a value of 40 degrees. Then I'll set a keyframe for the rotate X to minus 60 degrees. Next, I'll move to 24 seconds and six frames and set it to plus 35 degrees. I'll also press F9 to easy ease the motion into this keyframe. Now we are almost done with the first stage and before we'll preview the motion, let's go up to the bevel material, open it and change the diffuse color to dark tint of gray just to match the reality better. I'll also take the whole layer and drag it so it will align to the right of my comp. Now let's switch off the transparency grid and create a quick RAM preview to check the motion. I think this looks fantastic. There is no way I could create this controlled motion in real life. So I'm happy, but I want more. So as the famous song says, you ain't seen nothing yet. In this point, I want to create a disintegration effect or rather the undisintegration look, which will create a solid DVD from many shattering pieces. Let's return to the effect controls, scroll down and investigate the modifiers we have here. As you may have noticed, with each one of these filters in this group, except for the BCC type on text, we get wonderful, sophisticated deformers. Each one of these deformers 
curl, shatter, ripple, and pulse deserves its own tutorial. But here I'm just going to cover the most cool of the above, the shatter deformer. So let's enable it and open the controls. I want to control my timing of the shutter effect, which is full 3D by the way. So I'll first set few of the settings and then use the manual time to set the animation to my liking. These values seems to work for me, however, I definitely urge you to play with each one and explore what it does. Since we have more ground to cover and I want to show you also how to integrate 3D text and some background elements, I'll skim here very quickly and just share with you my recipe. Okay, so going on from top to bottom, I'll set the crackability to 35, the velocity minimum to 0, the velocity variation to 30, gravity to minus 30 and scatter wipe mode I'll set it to top to bottom wipe time to 10 and last but not least the spin speed to 5 and now we come up to the interesting part of controlling the animation timing as I said instead of the built-in animation setup I'll choose here manual in the time mode and then control the animation by setting keyframes in the manual time values below. So at the first frame of my comp I'll set the value to 18 where we can barely see just few debris of the shutter DVD. Then I'll move my playhead to 14 seconds and reset it back to 0. In this case as well, I'll convert the second keyframe to an easy ease keyframe by pressing F9. Okay, now let's create a ramp preview to see this in motion. Well, I don't know about you, but I simply love this shutter simulation. It is very easy to set up, looks great, and operate in full 3D space. What more would you want from a shutter deformer, huh? Nothing more, I guess, which brings me to the next stage. I want to integrate some brick wall background and 3D text. In order to work faster from this point, I would highly recommend that we will render a full res proxy out of Disco. So go back to the effects controls and just before we are rendering, let's open the render section here and enable motion blur for the BCC effect. You must do it over here and not with the regular switch of the layer and the motion blur switch in the timeline. Once done, then select the comp and go to File, Create Proxy, Movie. Let's change the render here to Best Settings and make sure the output model is set to Lossless with Alpha. Then press Render. Now, depending on your hardware, it may take a while to process, but it's worth to do it this way because it will save huge time later on. Just to give you a rough indication, on my Mac Pro, this render took about 17 minutes. After the render is finished, we are ready to create our main comp. I'll open the comp name ANS Promo and drag the DVD Design Comp to this comp. This comp now uses the render file, the proxy file, and when I scrub the timeline, the response is great and very quick. Note that at any point of time, you can always return to the original comp and make changes if necessary. Anyway, in my comp, I've already placed the final sound mix, and few markers which will help us to place the title animation in sync. There's also a brick wall texture image which I'll use now as my background. So let's attend to this first. Just to remind you, 
I already have the exact 3D coordinates for the DVD box. This means that I can actually borrow them from this layer and apply it to my brick wall layer. If I do it like that, it will look as a real background in the correct perspective. To do it, we only need to convert this layer to be a 3D layer, then return to the DVD design comp, select the solid layer, and then press UU in sequence. This will reveal all the modified properties, but we are only interested in the rotation one. So scroll down until you can see them, and let's make the same adjustment in our main comp. As you see, for the Y rotation, we need to set it to 40 degrees. So let's come back to the main comp, select the brick wall layer, press R to show the orientation and rotation value, and then quickly set the Y rotation to 40 degrees. Now we can return to the DVD design comp and look under the rotate X. Here, of course, we have two keyframes, minus 60 at the first frame and plus 35 at 24 seconds and 6 frames. Note that this is an easy easy keyframe. Okay, with this in mind, come back to the ANS promo comp and let's mimic the same animation here. So with the first frame, set the keyframe for X rotation with a value of minus 60. Then move to 24.06, which is 24 seconds and 6 frame and set it to 35. Then press F9 to convert this keyframe to an easy ease keyframe. Excellent. Now scrub the time and just to check it aligns well. Looks very good to me. And this is without any camera or lights in the scene. Wonderful. I want to remind you that if you prefer, you can of course use After Effects built-in camera and lights to create the same look, but I rather use this method here because it is easier and also applies when you're working in an environment that doesn't support 3D camera, for example Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro. I'll use this method once again later when I'll add a 3D title, but for now we need to mask some part of the background image to integrate it better to the scene and mimic the light. For that, I'll double click on the layer and here in the layer view, I'll draw a rectangle mask which will reveal two thirds of the image and hide the upper third. Now back in the comp view, I'll press F to show the feather values Disable the proportions and set the height feather only to a huge number, like 600. It still doesn't cover the whole frame, so we'll need to modify the position a little bit. Press P and change the values here to 270 for the X, 470 for the Y, and minus 80 for the Z. Again, this is my values, you may need to plug in different numbers. Anyway, this will place the layer closer to us and also helps to hide the edges. Now, since we changed the position of the layer in 3D space, mathematically it might not be a perfect alignment, but I think we can live with it for now. Let's scrub the timeline to check its integrity. Well, it looks perfect, and although there is a slight change in perspective, I think this is the way I like it. An alternative method could be of course to use one of the effects inside After Effects like the Repo Tile or the Motion Tile effect and then instead of moving the layer just expanding its boundaries. But I feel it looks good as it is so I'll stick here with the simple approach. I think that using this mask trick we made it look very good and lighting wise it also looks as the light comes from the bottom left of the comp. This is another big saver in render time. Okay, the next step is to design our main titles. For that, you guessed it right, I'm going to create a new solid. In fact, I'll even name it a new solid. Let's set this one to the comp size and choose OK. 
Now I apply the BCC extruded text plugin from the BCC 3D objects category. As soon as I do it, a text window pops up, so let's input our text. Here I'm using a font name for Tura Condense with a size of 96, so I'll type down my title. A new solid. Then press apply. Doing so will generate immediately a 3D extruded text on the screen. Now all that's left is to touch up on the design and make it interact with the current elements already in place. As you noticed, we have similar controls here to the first filter we used, the extruded spline. Only this time they are all affecting the text instead of a polygon. This means we can work a little bit faster here. So first let's do the basic transformation. Open up the transformation, make sure you are at the first frame, and let's quickly set the same camera animation values here as well. Rotate Y should be 40 degrees, Rotate X should be minus 60 at the first frame, and remember to place a keyframe here. Then move the CTI to 24.06, and change it to 35. Don't forget to set this keyframe to an easy ease keyframe or else it won't follow the animation correctly. Great. Position wise we need to control it differently and also sync it to the narration. So scrub to 15 seconds or so where you see the whole DVD box after the shutter effect or the shutter deformer has ended and let's decide where the main title should be on the screen. I'll use here the position X, Y scrubbers in the effect until it will look at the place that I want. I think that a good value should be around 270 for the X and 255 for the Y. We'll also want to animate this value so the title will slide in at the correct timing. So let's move to the first marker and animate it backward. I'll press shift plus page down four times, which will move me to one second and 10 frames after the marker, and then set a keyframe for the position X, Y at this point. Then I'll return to the marker and change only the Y value to say 800. This will lower our title on the vertical axis only and make it travel in the opposite way to the shutter wipe construction of the DVD box, yielding a very nice animation. Now we need to keep it in place for a few seconds and then move it out of the screen. So move to 7 seconds, set another keyframe with the existing values and then move 20 frames forward and lower it again. You can of course set any animation you like here, but I'm just trying to recreate what I did in the promo I showed you before. So once again, these are my own settings. Okay, it will also be a wise move to change the incoming and outgoing keyframe from linear keyframe to easy ease in or easy ease out. In this case, I'll select the second keyframe and set it to be an easy ease in by pressing shift plus F9. Then I'll go to the last keyframe here and select it and convert it to an easy ease out. Now let's do another run preview to check it in action. From the run preview you see, the motion is very good and solid, and we only need to pay attention to the look of the title itself. So let's do just that. I'll drag the title to be under the DVD design layer, so the pieces of the DVD will render on top of it. Then we can close the transformation and work our way up to the materials. First. I'll open the extrusion and set the depth to 2, which is enough for my test. I'll also set a different bevel style. I seem to be moved by the convex style, so I'll choose this option. 
Last touch here is to reduce the bevel amount to maybe 0.2. Okay, next drill down the material and this time I'll use one of the built-in textures. This list as you can see lasts forever and holds dozens of great patterns ready for use. I already tested a few of them and come to the decision that in this case I might want to use the stone creamy white marble. You can even mix this material with your own color. Just sample a diffuse color from your scene and then just scrub the texture strength slider until you get the desired mix. Very very cool, but I think that I will stick with the default behavior and not add an additional color here. What I will choose instead is to bump map the text to give it more natural feel. Again, you have the same enormous list to choose from. And I already made my choice and it will be stone marbled crystal. This will create a similar if not equal look to the brick textures we have underneath. Well, we are almost done here. What's missing is a better definition to the text lightning. For that, I'll scroll down to the built-in light and change its source XY to minus 400 on the X and might also want to move it further in Z space to say 0.2. Yes, that looks very nice. Final touches which you might consider is maybe to add some fake shadows. You can add a simple drop shadow effect from the perspective category and maybe set the softness to say 20 pixels or so. You can use the same settings and apply them to the DVD box comp, which will help to create a little bit more depth and serves well as a contact shadows. From this point onward, you can duplicate this layer and with each instance just change the text to follow your own narration. This is what I done and let me show you my final comp. I want to point your attention to the second lines of text. For them I also added the CC light wipe effect. This helps to reveal the layer in an interesting fashion on the screen. Once you're done you can of course render the file. If you want to know exactly what I did, I can tell you. I pressed the rendered file, then took a break and prepared a cup of coffee. Or maybe it was tea. Gosh, I can't remember. Anyway, I will allow you to choose your own drink. Remember, you need to be creative. There you have it. Now you know. I think you wouldn't expect that this comp will only consist of 10 layers including the sound layer. This is of course possible thanks to the sophisticated controls you get with Boris Continuum Complete. That along with the careful planning as well. Oh yes, I just remember an important note. If you think you're only going to need the 3D objects filter, you can buy these sets of plugins alone. They are now called Continuum 3D Objects and you can even download 14 days full working copy from BorisEffect.com to try them yourself. Now if you still wonder what you will find inside this DVD box, I like to invite you to check the complete table of contents at training.creativecow.net or visit my own site sterneffects.com to view few samples clip from the bonus material of this DVD. So, what are you waiting for? Ah, you want to hear my goodbye? Oh, such a polite, God bless, I love you too. It is always worth to stick until the end because you will see a different implication of the Continuum 3D object. So, I hope you learned something new today, and until next time we'll meet, this is Eran Stern for BorisEffect.com and CreativeCow.net saying goodbye.